Hello, Jake. It's Chris from Trimble. Um, apologies first for the amount of time it's taken to get this video together. Um, my life has been hectic <laughs> as of late. Lots of lots of time spent out of the office, and I've just never had the equipment to get this done. But now that I'm at home, I can take some time to do it. Um, so I, I thank you for your patience. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly through a very quick demo. This is normally an hour and a half. Um, but I'm, I'm going to skip over some of the, the explanational stuff, um, like the libraries and components and stuff like that. What I'm aimed to do is to show you very quickly how to put elements in the model and then to use that model to produce automated reports, drawings, and NC files. Okay. Um, the intention is that if you've got any, any questions afterwards, um, you can ring me or you can send me an email. Um, and also, um, that it's also worth mentioning that our Steel Essentials training course, which I, I, I strongly urge you to attend um, if you decide that the tech was the way forward for you, um, that will teach you everything you need to know over the five day course from the, from the interface to generating a model all the way to completing a, a fully detailed structural steelwork project. Okay, so um, let's crack on then. So I've got two grids, um, that's intentional. One I'm going to do manually, the other one I'm going to show you an automated component that will help speed up detailing. Okay. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is create a view, a section view. So if I go to my view tab up here and go to using a section using two points, I can create my section on there, just make it 2D, and then let's cascade these windows so that it's nice and tidy, like so. so. We want to start putting some elements in, and the obvious one to start with is the columns. So let's insert those two. I can see that they're in the wrong orientation. So I can select both of those columns. I can use my mini toolbar tab to change the orientation of that to zero. So now you can see that they are range in. They're probably also the wrong section size for this type of application. Um, so I want to get the little dialog box up and let's change that profile to something a bit more sensible so 406 and let's change that one as well 406 yeah, that's pretty good and let's get a theme profile let's get a sort of rafter profile up yeah, let's leave it at that we're not doing anything fancy so i'm just going to guess an angle i'm not normally i would set this but again in the interest of speed i'm not going to in. Right, so we've got a basic thing. So now we can start to look at our component library. You can search this in a number of ways. Uh, they are automatically categorized, but it's easy to search for them. So I can search for a base, or I can use these numbers in, in the brackets that you can see um, to search for as well. So 142 is the base plate I want. And if I double click on them, I get the component dialog box. And this is where you're going to set the parameters of the component. Okay, so the base plate thickness and size, whether it's got holes or bolts, whether it's got grout holes or not. Um, anchor rods, so this is where you're going to set all, up all your hold and down bolt information. So you've got your know, bent rods, you've got bent rods, U rods, washer plates, control your bolt assemblies, then you've got your washer plates, and then your bolt positioning. Finally, your weld tab to specify the welds. Okay, but I'm going to use a preset. It's worth noting at this point that everything that I'm showing you, unless stated otherwise, is out of the box. So it's how it will be delivered day one to you. Okay, so let's select those. Let's select both of those columns and then select the insertion point. And we've got base plates on our frame. Okay, same thing I could do for haunches. So let's search haunch. Let's bring up the Eves haunch 102 again. Primary member, rafter, let's fix it in. You'll notice that I didn't have to pre shorten those, those columns, that's controlled within the component. So within the component, I can put rib stiffeners, morris stiffeners, compression stiffeners. I can specify um, what happens to the top of the column, whether it's flat, whether it sails through, or whether it's uh, whether it's, it's beveled to suit the pitch of the roof. Uh, the top one's useful when you're do when you're using this component for moment connections. And so you'll use this component for both portal frame connections and, and moment frame connections. 
then you've got your bolt specifications in here and again your weld so when you are doing the connections you're going to be looking at these components and the component dialogues to to do all the settings for those okay um then finally apex launch 506 so let's put that in like that all of these components all of the settings for the beams the objects everything in, in within tech structures is customizable it's an important thing to note because you can set everything up to um, suit your processes whether it's whether you've got pre-designed connections um, whether you've got preferences about the way that you model them to suit your specific manufacturing processes it's all entirely up to you and you can fully customize it to, rep to, to replicate those um, just represents a good way of shortcutting um, for you putting the information in all the time uh, so now that we've got one portal frame i'm going to copy that down the rest of the structure so i'm going to say i want to copy it from here to here Tecla has taken the measurement for me. We know that they're six meter phase and we need five copies. So I've entered five in this value. So I can copy that down and I've got all of my frames. So let's refresh that view just to tidy it up a bit. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I'm probably going to put an ease tie in. So if I load my brace, I'm happy with a 114. Let's go from the center of that column at the top to the center of that column. The reason I do it in one line is just to make sure that it is one true straight line um, it just means that I'd, if I was doing it one by one I would, I would have to double check to make sure that it was all marked through but if I do it in one yeah, I'll have more than one go so let's move that down 100 mil like so makes life a bit easier and then what I've got to do is just once I've got them in the right position I've got to use the edit command and there's a split tool in here for breaking these down into individual um, individual makes like so so I'll just keep selecting the one that I want to split and the split point and it breaks it for me the final piece of that puzzle connection 105 which is that portal bracing connection so I'm just going to apply that to these objects like so just run down the line connections once I'm at this point I need the same thing on the other side but if the building is symmetrical there's no need to go around and draw those again I can just select these ties I can start the copy selection copy special mirror command to specify the line of symmetry which in this case is the apex line and then hit copy and then I've got an exact copy on the other side and all the connections and everything will come with it Another very quick shortcut. Uh, I'm not going to put purlins in. What I am going to do, again, in the interest of time, what I am going to do is I'm just going to show you just how broad our catalog is. So these are all the presets for um, the purlin settings. So you can see we've got Albion, Airship, DW, CMF, Dublin, High Span, Kingspan, Metsex, Devon, Steel Sections, Thomas Panon Profiles, and finally Hadley. Um, and these are all supported in our library. Um, down here you can see UK, UK cold rod sections, they're all listed here, those are full libraries of all the sections that these guys are offering and that is kept up to date every single year. Okay, That's one important reason why you need to, why, why you should maintain your license every single year. And within the library you also get some cladding, decking, concrete, rebar, um, timber if you want it, all those kinds of things. So you can really use Tecla structures as a multi-material um, platform it's not just for the steel work and, and you can make you can you can take the benefit of all the automation that we've built into this software as well um, with those other other materials um, so that's my frame the next crucial step is to run a numbering without the numbering I can't pull out any reliable reports and I cannot create any drawings so let's run a numbering what that's done in a, in a, in a fraction of a second it has compared all of the objects in the model for similarities and differences and assigned their part marks on that basis. Okay, so anything that's the same will have the same part mark. Um, that's critical for the drawings. Um, it helps sort of keep the number of drawings that I've got to create down, which is the next thing I'm going to do. So if I go to my star five fabrication drawings and select the excluding single parts, which I'm going to use for the purposes of this, this demonstration just to speed it up. Um, what I can now do is I can right click on that setting and say create drawings for all parts 
Now, what Tecla is doing now is it's using a series of rules um, which are defined as object filters. So it's looking for certain objects and applying preset drawing layouts to those objects. What that means is that you can have different drawing settings for different for different modeling elements and Tecla will apply those all to them. So for example, your column, you might want the center line on the fabrication drawing. Well, but with the rafters, you might not want the center line. So you can create two drawing settings, one for column, one for rafters, and you can use the drawing wizard to apply those settings automatically based on a parameter on the object. And in, in this, and by default, that comes as drawing name. So when it comes across a rafter, it applies a rafter layout. When it comes across a column, it applies a column layout. Fully customizable. Um, what it's also doing at the same time is it's creating the single part drawings. So it's actually creating two sets of drawings. So if we go to the document manager, I can show you what I mean. So this is our document manager. It's basically a drawing list, but it's, it's a bit more capable than that. Uh, but I won't bore you with that just at this point. You'll learn about that off the course. Um, so let's have a look at the single part drawings. So we've got a plate drawing. Um, no editing required. It's, it's quite good out of the box. Well, it's very good out of the box. You've got allocation to assembly, so that's how many of the objects you need and where they are. And then you've got your title blocks. You can customize all of these title blocks. You can put your customer logo there instead, where the Tecla logo is instead. Um, haunches is a good one. So you'll notice that that is automatically prioritizing two out of one. Um, and we've got some shaft drawings as well. So there's a four rafter shaft. So if we have a look at the assembly drawings then, we've got uh, a column drawing. So on the assembly drawings, they're slightly different. We've got a bit of materials here, so all of the elements that you need to make up one of these assemblies. We've got the general notes, so that is um, that's just things that are common. So you'll notice that there are no hole and weld marks on here, um, apart from the base plate. That means that all the holes are 22 diameter and the welds are six millimeters, unless noted. Um, again, no editing required on here. Maybe tidying up if, if you so inclined, but it's very simple to do that. You just select the marks for the element that you want to move and reposition it. Um, let's have a look at the portal rafters. Again, very limited editing required here. Um, if you had purling cleats on here, there'd be a running dimension. Um, and you can add dimensions very simply. So if I want to put the contact points for the haunches, I could just run my dimensioning command select the points that I want to dimension and then position that dimension down there. I can change this as well. I can change the format of the dimension to a running dimension if I so wish, like so. And then I've got a zero point here and then there's a running dimension to take it from there. So again, very quick, very easy editing. Okay, let's close that. Let's have a look at how you produce NC files. This is very, very quick. You just go over to your file, go to export, go to NC files, Tick for both plates and profiles since we want to create um, both of those and then for all parts, hit create and that's finished. So in a fraction of a second, Tecla has gone through that model and it has created two files in here, one plates, one profiles. And if we have a look at one of these NC files with the free, with the free viewer, this one's from Steel Projects but there are other viewers available online. It allows us to then view that data that Tecla's created and we can validate it and check it that way. So we can see there's holes in here, that's as expected. Okay, very quick, very simple way of producing your deliverables directly from the model. And the model itself is very quick and easy to generate. Um, that's it for the, for the outputs. The, the last thing that I wanted to show you was a very quick component for, for setting up a full frame, um, building S91. All I've got to do is select the, select the component and insert and select an insertion point. And that will throw one of those in for me. Um, this one I did set up a little bit earlier. Um, all I did was change some of the profiles um, and put the purlins on. Um, but that's very easy to do and very easy to store as well. So what you can do with this component is you can set height, span, the number of bays and the span of that bay. All the white values are basically inputs that you can customize. Um, all of the section sizes for the, for the frame elements Geometry of the frame, so you know, the pitch of the roof, all that kind of thing. 
um, specify the components that, that this component, the, the connections that this component will apply automatically. You can see that down here. It's automatically put base plates, and haunches, and apex connections, purling raft, purling connections, bracing connections. It's all been put in automatically using this component, and this is where you specify that. Um, purling setting out and connection information. You've got your portal, portal bracing, vertical bracing, and then gable end. Very, very simple to set up. I can talk it, talk you through it if, if, if this is the way you want to go. Um, this is very useful if you have pre-engineered, predefined portal frames. You can set up a number of presets for those and call them in um, as and when you need them. Um, and it gives you a really good head start. It's by no means a, a complete system, but it's a very good head start. Um, I would also urge you to consider using this for estimating purposes as well. I'm sure that you've got enough experience with port frames to be able to take a fairly good guess if you haven't got the benefit of an in-house engineer. Um, but you can take advantage of all the tools within Tecla to very quickly produce a port frame model and then use the automated um, material exports, material reporting um, to produce an Excel sheet which you can then start to use to program some, some pricing um, matrix in there. Um, very efficient way to produce port frame estimates. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, like I say, that was a very whistle stop demonstration of technical structures I've done in about 16 and a half minutes, what I normally take an hour and a half to do. Um, it's much more in depth normally. If you want to explore this in, in a bit more detail, by all means, give me a call or drop me an email. I'm happy to, to visit you at your offices to demonstrate this software. Um, and again, just to reiterate what I said in the beginning, um, the uh, Steel Essentials training course will cover everything that I've shown you here and more. Um, and it really is, it's a, it's a five day course and it really is um, recommended that, that you consider seeing that before. So again, if you want more information on that and if you want to have a look at dates, give me a call. I'll be happy to talk you through it. Um, if there's anything else I can help you with, Jake, please do get in touch and I'd always be happy to Thank you very much for your attention and for watching this video. Thank you.